Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another NBA 2K17 Pro Am game as we have a wide open lane dunking on the first possession of the game. You guys saw these guys' record. Wasn't really anything to write home about. Wasn't anything too impressive. They have a lot of games under their belt. Over 300 games played. They're pretty much pro and veterans if you want to call them that. But they're also just a pro team and a record just above 500. Which isn't too impressive. But obviously you never want to sleep on your opponents. So got to respect them. Got to play hard still. And hopefully come out with the victory. But as this game is going on. We're going to continue our NBA playoff preview. Or predictions I should say. As we're going through the first round matchups. We did the Eastern Conference last video. Now we move on to the Western Conference. Starting off with the number one seed, the probable favorites, rightfully so, to win it all, the Golden State Warriors. Getting Kevin Durant healthy to end the regular season, their team is at full strength. Going against a team that may not be at full strength, the Portland Trailblazers, who were able to sneak past the Denver Nuggets in the last couple of weeks to get that final seeding spot for the Western Conference playoffs. So, do the Blazers have a chance? Damian Lillard thinks so. He says Blazers in six. But, I mean, what else is he supposed to say? He's on the put Trailblazers. I'm not. So, I can say rightfully, or not rightfully, I can say myself that I think the Warriors are going to not only win the series, but sweep the series. Win it all four games. Now, the reason why I say that, you know, Damian Lillard was hot at the end of the regular season. And, you know, he's definitely going to be heard from in these playoffs. And last year in the playoffs, the Blazers pushed the Warriors to six. But, that was with Steph Curry hurt and missing the first couple of games of that series. Now that Curry's back, Durant is back, Nurkic is a little bit banged up. The Blazers just don't have what it takes defensively, I don't think, to guard all the options the Warriors have. They struggle with it all throughout the regular season in all four of their matchups. I believe they got swept, and I mean, you don't want to put too much stock in the regular season matchups, but I just don't think the Blazers have really done enough to, you know, fix that problem. I think the Warriors get the win. Now, I mentioned Nurkic and, you know, Blazers not being healthy. That's pretty big because... A lot of what the Blazers have done lately and in the past as well when Mason Plumley was there was once McCollum and Lillard get double teamed off, you know, pick and rolls and stuff like that. You know, you throw it to the center at about the free throw line area and then the center either passes the ball or takes their own shot. And Nurkic has been doing a better job of, you know, mainly scoring than whatever Pumley brought when Pumley was there. Nurkic is putting on some major stat lines out there, dominating games, even taking clutch shots at the end of those. And for him not to be there... Probably is the dagger in just whatever chances they have. I, I would think at least that, um, you know, they could take over. But one thing about Golden State that I think will be very interesting to watch is, you know, not only Golden State, but Kevin Durant boat blew 3-1 leads in the playoffs last year. And that hurts. And Golden State was a little bit cocky during last year's playoffs, even during the regular season. And it kind of bit him at the ass at the end. Their Draymond got suspended. They blew the lead. So I think they're going to come out with a very determined mindset in these playoffs. Not going to mess around. Now obviously they're going to have some fun pass the ball to Golden State way. But I think they're going to come out very determined to take care of business. And that's why I think they're going to sweep the Blazers. Now we move on to the Spurs and Grizzlies. Now, once again, one team here is not 100%. And that is the Grizzlies. They are missing Tony Allen. And you may be wondering, really, Tony Allen? That important? Tony Allen's so old. He can't really play offense maybe it's better he's not even on the court Tony Allen's still an elite defender in the NBA man he's still one of the best on ball defenders out there probably gonna make an all NBA defensive team once again this year and he's not gonna be out there this year he got injured in the last game of the regular season which is exactly why people rest in those last couple of you know days and weeks of the regular season because you don't want someone getting hurt in a meaningless game Memphis already had the seven seed locked up they play Tony Allen now he has a calf injury he's out for the playoffs and you know now they don't have anyone to check Tony Parker or check Kawhi Leonard out there to really, you know, bother them, get in their grill and stuff like that. Meanwhile, the Spurs had that guy in Kawhi Leonard, and they also had that guy in Danny Green, who's also a good defender, so, you know, they, those guys could get on Mike Conley, and Mike Conley's playing great this year. He's having a career year. Been Memphis's best player this year with Gasol a little bit banged up, Zebo going to the bench and all that. Mike Connolly really, you know, I want to say earning all the dollars on his contract, but earning most of those dollars this year, man. And, you know, it should be a close series, and I think, like, almost all these games are going to be close. It's just the nature of the way these teams play. You know, it's probably going to be a slow-paced series. I think the Spurs win in five, though, despite saying that. I don't think these two teams are too far off. The Grizzlies match up well. Both these teams like playing two big men on the court. You know, with Gasol, David Lee, De Deadman, Allridge, and on the other side, you got Gasol and um, Jermichael Green and Zebo and whoever else is coming off the bench. But I think the Spurs win this in five. I think Kawhi Leonard is just too good. I think the fact that just because they have Kawhi Leonard, that should be enough to win it. But, um... 
you know, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the Spurs. A little bit worried about the Spurs and, you know, the Celtics and teams that rely on a system to do well rather than just superstars. You know, obviously the Spurs have that guy and the Celtics. They have guys in Kawhi and um, Isaiah Thomas. But the rest of the team around them, you know, I'm not too sure how much they'll spare out. But I do think the Spurs win the series in five. Moving on to Rockets and Thunder gonna be a great series man don't expect too much defense in this one but it is going to be a fun series to watch there are going to be triple doubles guaranteed between westbrook and harden i think the rockets also win this series in five games westbrook's gonna win always one game by himself that's just the way it's gonna go that's just the beast he is but Harden plays more of a team style of basketball, and I think that's going to translate more to the playoffs. Uh, I'm not, I don't think the Harden led offense, the Harden ball, you know, picking um, whatever, spread the floor with shooters, yada, yada, yada. I don't think that's going to win a championship, but, you know, it should be able to get by the OKC Thunder at least. Now, for the Thunder, this is probably the best matchup possible they could have gone in the playoffs as far as the first four seasons, besides maybe the Clippers, because they played pretty closely in the regular season, but, um, I don't know, I just think that, you know, the one thing the Thunder really need to do is, you know, the one thing they've made an identity out of the last couple of years, which is crashing the offensive glass, especially ever since they got an NS Cantor, they've been absolute bullies on the boards, and they need to do that to, you know, really get those extra possessions while the Rockets are getting three-pointers all over the place, because the Thunder don't really have too many three-point shooters, and like I said, I just think Harden plays more of a team-style ball that translates to the playoffs, Russell Westbrook is a little bit out of control, especially in crunch time, but... The one thing about Russell Westbrook's game this year, if you've been watching, is that he has taken over games in the clutch like Kobe Bryant style. There's always been that, you know, comparison that Westbrook is the closest thing to Kobe in the NBA. And you could see it in these crunch time situations where Westbrook's taking, I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to take the shot. And I'm going to make the, sh the shot kind of possessions. And, you know, they've been getting a lot of victories out of that. But does that translate well in the playoffs? Not too sure about it. We're going to have to wait and see that. If the Thunder do win, Westbrook's going to have to be exactly the guy he was in the regular season. But I'm not sure you can do all that in the regular season and the playoffs. Like, it just, you know, you go against tougher competition, you know? So, um, I say Rockets in five. And in the final series, the Clippers and Jazz. I got Clippers in seven. I think this is the only series that goes seven. Really undecided about this one. I'm really looking forward to it. It's not going to be the prettiest series. The Jazz just playing ugly, you know, slow pace, defensive minded with Rudy Gobert style game. But it's going to be some, there's a lot of mind games in that one. You got Chris Paul in there. Chris Paul, the king of mind games at point guard. What's he going to do? Now, the one thing I, you know, you have to stress is that Chris Paul has to stay healthy for the Clippers to have a chance. The Clippers were going to get out the first round last year, but, you know, CP3 got injured. Blake wasn't even 100%. Those guys are all, you know, here now. Blake is pretty much 100% at this point. CP3 is ready. They're all ready. And I think, you know, the healthy Clippers should be able to beat this Jazz team that doesn't have too much playoff experience. And that could be the one thing that cost them. You think about a close playoff game. Can Gordon Hayward really close a playoff game out? Because he's never really been there before. He's never been the guy in no situation. And if it's not Gordon Hayward, who is it going to be? You know, Ronnie Hood, Joe Ingles, um, George Hill. Derek Favors is not 100%. Rudy Gobert relies on other people to score for him. And there are other people to set him up since he's just, you know, a center that can't really dribble or anything like that. So I would say the Clippers win the series, but... You know, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, a guy that might be one of the best defense, well, not might be, one of the best defensive players, probably top three in defensive player of the year voting, Rudy Gobert, going to showcase his stuff, along with DeAndre Jordan. It's going to be a gritty series, but, you know, that that's what I got. Clippers in seven, but you can convince me otherwise, man. Really, that series, I'm not saying I'm looking forward to that one the most, but I think that's going to be the closest one. Like I said last video, I could be wrong. I could be an idiot. I probably am an idiot. Let me know in the comment section if you think I am. Leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy the game. If you guys enjoyed the, the playoff talk going through the Western Conference. Subscribe for more NBA 2K17 Pro-Am games, and I'll catch you guys next time.